What's going on, Brev? It's your boy, Sort of the Black, and today we've got a real special edition of Full Frame Weekly. We are talking about underrated Warframe. People that you never see in missions, the people that you should be seeing in missions because they're great. Well, some of them are. Most of them are. So, without further ado, let's get right into this. For today, we're going to start with one of the least played frames, and according to the PAX East trivia questions from DE themselves, this frame is the least played frame of 2017. We are talking about Atlas. Now, Atlas has some weird requirements to get, and his builds are a little bit strange, but he can prove himself to be a pretty formidable warrior in combat. Now, to get Atlas, you have to get the blueprints, the chassis, the systems, and the neurotics from doing the Jordis Golem assassination mission on Eris. This is kind of a problem because it requires you to take an arc wing, and the arc wing mechanics are not great, D knows that, they're trying to work on it, but a lot of people don't play Arcwing, so it makes Alice kind of unavailable. On top of that, Alice's builds are a little bit sporadic. There is a kind of common theme on Warframe Builder to try to do kind of a one-punch man build with his first ability, and that ability racks up damage pretty quickly, especially when you do multiple casts. It can pretty much wipe out an entire field if you have enough energy to do it. However, the build I tend to focus on is more for duration, because I like to use abilities like the Rumblers, which is his fourth. The Rumblers are extremely useful, they take a lot of damage, they do a lot of damage, and they can stay out for a fairly long time as you can see. On top of that, when you recast the ability while the Rumblers are out, they explode and deal a pretty decent, plus high amount of damage. So, that was pretty good. I enjoy him, he's a bit slow, but he's also got some good values and features. I think Alice is a frame that a lot of people should really try to take the time to get despite how difficult he is to obtain. Even though he does have his flaws, he can definitely be proven to be a pretty good fighter and a pretty good Tenno uh, warrior, so get Alice. He's pretty good. On the next note, we have Hydroid. Hydroid came out long time ago, update 13, and I remember that update pretty pretty well, because that's when they introduced the stance mod, and they redid all the melee stuff, and I'm like, wow, this looks really cool. And they reduced, released Hydroid, and Hydroid, like Atlas, kind of has a weird requirement to get. Um, he has to be gotten from farming Zayhek Terraframe on Earth, which, if you fought him before, you know how much of a pain in the ass that boss is. Like, Chasing him around the map all the time, and then getting to the uh, end part where we had to just sit there, kill his lackeys, and shoot him in the face over and over again. I mean, it's not terrible, it's just really annoying, honestly. He's just an annoying boss to fight. The Hydroid, though, has some interesting abilities, and most people utilize his Pilfering Swarm Augment, his Tentacle Swarm ability, to farm for credits and extra resources and whatnot, especially on higher level missions such as Eris, Pluto, the Derelict, and the Void. But I don't think that's what Hydra should really be used for. I mean, at this point you're just kind of using him as like a credit slave, and that's not really what I feel like Hydra should be used for. The problem though, is that Hydroid's abilities are kind of iffy, I guess. Tempest Barrage is something that I'd really like to do a good build around, however, no matter what I try to do, the duration never seems to last long enough to you know, really get it to work properly, so I can't really do too much with that. Tidal Surge is kind of useless, Undertow is good, but the damage it does is not very high, and you need something like Blind Rage to really pick it up, but at that point the energy efficiency is going to be really, really low. In order to Offset that, you need waiting expertise, but that just drops the duration, and you have all kinds of problems. Which leaves Pilfering Swarm, which kind of sets up the whole credit farming, credit slave thing with Hydroid, which isn't good. I meant to say Tentacle Swarm, but I said Pilfering Swarm, because that's pretty much what all he's used for. Credit farming. Crap. Hydroid deserves more respect. So, hopefully, they come out with something for him at some point, because I really think that he deserves more. Next up we have Evolve, and in my opinion, and I know all the Loki fanboys and all the Ash fanboys are probably going to have my head for this, but I think that Ivara is the best stealth frame in the world. Let me explain why. Prowl is the third invisibility ability in Warframe. 
and it is considerably better than Ash's Smokescreen and Loki's Invisibility because it is a channeling ability rather than a duration ability. And it is affected by duration mods and power efficiency mods, which allow the cost to get down really, really low. I'm pretty sure I have my channeling cost at like 0.56 energy per second, which isn't much. So I can stay invisible for the most part for like an entire mission if I have max energy when I start. The offset to this is that I can't attack when I'm in my prowl. However, I can do melee, and from what it seems like, it used to be different, but back in the day, it seemed like with Ivara, when you attacked, you immediately lost Prowl, but a couple missions ago, I did recently, um, I was attacking with her, and that broke me out of Prowl, but then it put me right back in when I stopped. So I'm going to do some more testing on this and just really see how that works, because I might have to start doing builds around Prowl, but if that is the case, then it just makes her even more OP. And Honestly, it just kind of proves my point that she's better than both Loki and Ash in terms of stealth. The other thing I want to talk about with Ivara is the sleep arrow combo that you can do. With a heavy enough range build, you can pretty much use the uh, noise arrow and then the sleep arrow and just take out an entire group all at once. Especially if you have like, a really um, crowd control kind of setup going like with the Tonkor or the Tento or have the Moderai school on right now. You can do a lot of crowd clearing with that ability, and it's really good for stealth missions, so I definitely give it a shot. The next thing uh, that Ivar really shines with is the Artemis bow, which is one of the quote-unquote exalted weapons, kind of like a Excalibur's exalted blade or Wukong's primal fury. Uh, Artemis bow does hella damage, um, and it scales off of uh, primary weapons, and so I use mostly my red crit uh, build dread for this, and the damage is just unreal. Um, and that has like seven multi shot as well, so I'm thinking about taking my Serenos Prime out with this and seeing what I can do uh, damage wise with this build. But I mean, it takes down Sentience easily enough, almost as quickly as it, uh, my uh, Excalibur Exalted Blade does, so it's pretty good as far as damage. Next up, we have Mirage. And I'm honestly kind of surprised I don't see Mirage in casual play because she has a lot of really strong abilities. And if you don't know this, for the higher level players who have unlocked the War Within and done the missions and whatnot, and have gone to the Kuva Fortress, if you're doing a regular mission on the Kuva Fortress and you use Flight of Hand, the cameras won't affect you and the turrets will turn against the Grenier and shoot at them. So you can essentially take over the whole fortress with the right build. It's pretty cool. On top of that, Mirage has a lot of really interesting abilities, um, just all completely revolving around Hall of Mirrors. When you have this out, you gain multiple copies of yourself, and these copies will lose. Well, they will essentially mimic your actions and shoot the same amount of bullets that you shoot, and they will also mirror your melee. This can be really, really useful with the correct build. So mine lasts for about 45 seconds, and I usually take weapons out like Sinoid Simular, as you can see right now, and Sinoid Gamma Core, Sometimes I'll take the Serenos Prime just because of the multi-shot factor. I can figure out a giant wave of people at once if I really wanted to. Grenade launchers work really well with this. The Talons and the Kastanas work really well with this. There's just a lot you can do. Another thing that you can do is get out uh, something like the Glaive, the Glaive Prime, or the Sestra, and just... Serrata, my bad. And just toss it around with all the mirrors and have this blast. It's really cool. Prism is also a really good skill, and... It can be a very powerful crowd clearing ability, again, with the right build. Probably want to do a power efficiency, power strength uh, build with that. And you're going to need to focus it, which means you're going to lose some duration on the Hall of Mirror side, but it can be very, very useful. The last one I want to talk about today, I kind of had my doubts about it towards the beginning, is when I picked them up, all the sliding around was a bit of a problem. So, Neza has this unique ability where she goes peace. That's a I keep confusing him for a girl because he looks like a girl. My bad. But, back to the point. Neza slides around a lot. Like, a lot. It's like you're walking on ice in any other platforming game. But, he has a lot of potential. And, warding Halo is really good because it essentially gives him invincibility and also kind of gives him the stun 
kind of thing that uh, Equinox in the day form has. But to his force, I can't remember right now. But um, I think that's a really cool ability because you can kind of push people back and stay in an cloak, and I think that's really useful. On top of that, uh, the Divine Pillars or Divine Spears, whatever that skill is called, is also really good with a range build. And if it doesn't kill, you can still get finisher damage off of it, which is awesome. Uh, the Firewalker ability is also pretty nice too because it clears status effects as well as gives um, the fire procs, which sends enemies into panic mode. So they can't attack you, but you can still attack them, which is pretty useful. Um, the second ability that he has where he throws out the ring isn't too terribly useful. I mean, I don't use it very much, and I didn't highlight it in this video, but it's still something to look at. So I recommend all of these frames very highly. Um, hopefully Hydroid will get fixed up at some point, um, but it, uh, out of all of these five, um, I'd recommend the Ivara and Mirage very highly. Atlas would have to come after probably Hydroid and then next. So finishing this video up, I want to give a special shout out to uh, Banshee and Overon, two more frames that didn't quite make the list because they're definitely coming up in popularity, especially Overon. Um, with the Reckoning builds, uh, people use Reckoning all the time defense and survival missions. It looks really nice and it does a pretty good amount of damage and the healing factor that revolves around is pretty good too. Banshee, I have to mention because people use shit all over Banshee and then when Resonating Quake came out, like, I mean it's still pretty niche. Not a lot of people know about it but if you do, you know how good this thing is and you might see a video from me highlighting this at some point so stay tuned for that. But I gotta give a huge shout out to both Banshee and Ogre. So thank you guys for watching, uh, make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and if I missed anybody, uh, be sure to let me know if you think there's some uh, underrated frames that people should be using or just don't use at all, or somebody that you really like that deserves some recognition. Let me know, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.